sports page with the Orlando Sentinel and FM 96.9 The Games, Mike the Bulldog Bianchi. On JRR. Bulldogs sports page brought to you by Kaufman and Lynn. Jeff Kaufman will be here next hour, by the way. He uh, answers your legal questions for free on Monday. If you got a question you want to text over to 22526, feel free. All right, dog, uh, you, you want to start with the uh, Game 2 NBA Finals last night? So that's probably freshest in everybody's memory. Yeah, the Boston Celtics take a 2-0 lead. The problem is that the uh, Mavericks, they don't know who the Boston Celtics' best player is night in and night out. Game one, it was Christoph Porzingis. Game two, Drew Holiday led the Celtics with 26 points, 11 rebounds. And, <clears throat> yeah, that's the problem is, you know, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, the Celtics have so many players and they're so deep that I just don't think Luka Doncic can do. I mean, he was a one man show last night, essentially. He had a triple double, 32, 11, and 11, but Kyrie Irving had another subpar game. The Celtics are just too talented and too deep, in my opinion. They're going to win this series. I don't know if it'll be a sweep, but it, uh, I think it's going to be a gentleman sweep. At least so five so, one. You that's what you and Lynch called from the get go. Five yeah. five one. Okay. Yeah. So there you have it. Um, uh, my Panthers four, on one. Saturday. Four night. one. Sorry. Uh, Panthers on Saturday night. Sergey Bobrovsky. Man, did you said I was watching uh, the highlights of this game. <laughs> my God, that guy was stopping everything mm-hmm. for the Panthers. They end up taking Game One of the Stanley Cup Finals over the Edmonton Oilers. 3-0 in that game. Game two is tonight. I think 8 p.m. puck yeah. drops. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, you're correct. And I tell you, I, some, it's not like the Oilers didn't have a lot of great looks. They did. He was just, I mean. They had so many. I actually watched that game, dog. I was obviously bored on Saturday night, but I mean, they fired <laughs> off so many shots on the Bobrovsky guy. And he's like, he's just a shield. Hey, um, well, you know, us serious fans just call him Bob. Yeah, <laughs> call I, know, I know. I get hey, it. I, I have a proposal to make, gentlemen. What? I know we uh, have the F1 desk, which will open here in a second. I'm starting to think we're going to have to open up a PGA desk. What, the chef? Because it's a, it's a repeat performance, it seems, every weekend with Scotty Scheffler uh, doing it again at the Memorial. Do yesterday. we just call it the kitchen, Pat? Because the chef's always cooking up a win, my boy. <laughs> Yeah, he cooked up a win yesterday despite being two over par 74 in the final round. That was his highest final round in two years. But, yeah, he wins again. That course was set up tough. The chef wins, beats uh, Marikawa by one shot. Uh, Right now, the chef has won five times in an eight-start span. That hasn't happened since Tiger Woods in 2007. Um, his five wins this season tied for the most before the end of June in the past 60 seasons on the PGA Tour. So the guy is just playing lights out. And if not for the if not for the incident at the PGA Championship, he might have won that as well. So yeah, probably would have. I told you guys, man, he's he's the real deal. Yeah. Do we want to go to the F1 desk now? F1 desk, speaking of uh, wins, uh, you know, from the Canadian Grand Prix, uh, return to form for who? Talk about People tried to get in my boy's pants that day. Yeah, yesterday, I believe it was. But Max Verstappen coming in with the big one. Max Verstappen straps on another win. Somebody went into the wall. That didn't matter. Verstappen let that. Verstappen, sorry, he let them lead for a little bit, and then he just kept on winning. Thank, thank you, F1 desk from the Canadian Grand Prix. The NASCAR desk, Kyle Larson, wins in Sonoma, which is essentially his home track. He grew up about 80 miles from Sonoma Raceway in California. He wins that race. Good week for him because he also got his appeal approved where he can now um, essentially race in the in the uh, playoff because you know he didn't he wasn't able to race in the Coca Cola 600 because before he got there. Uh, the race was, or, or before you know, he got there, but the race was called because of rain. There's a rule in NASCAR that if you don't race in a race, you have, you're not eligible for the playoff. But he appealed, of course, because of the Indianapolis 500 uh, 
thing that he was doing. And that NASCAR's and, reasonable. They did that for uh, Kyle Busch, if you remember the broken leg. I mean, you yeah. Know. And then he I mean, went on, I, of course, to you know have a great season. Yeah, you can't keep him out of the, right. <laughs> the playoff. He's the best driver on the circuit. Didn't Bush Probably. break his leg right after we talked to he him did. that day? He did. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad we didn't say break a leg. I know. By the way, Gators and Florida State make the College World Series over the weekend. Both of them won uh, their Super Regionals. The Gators, again, shocking that they were even in the NCAA tournament. Now they're going to Omaha. They sweep Clemson 2-0, and what a game that was yesterday. Five hours and three minutes, 13 innings. Yeah, went, uh, yeah, unbelievable topsy-turvy game. Florida State won their regional on Saturday night. Uh, they beat UConn, a bunch of home runs by uh, Tibbs, their, one of their star sluggers, and man. Well, it was so Saturday Florida day, and, actually. Saturday day, yeah. yeah. Florida and Florida State going to Omaha. By the way, it looks like it's going to be an all-SEC, all-ACC College World Series. The SEC already has four teams in. The ACC has three teams in. The final berth will be decided tonight when Georgia plays NC State. So it's going to be all SEC, ACC in the College World Series. Did uh, um, did either of you catch the Belmont? I mean, we forgot that was even I, on, I think. I watched it. Yeah. I watched it. 17 to 1. Lo- door, door knock? You yeah. 17 to 1 long shot, yeah. Yeah. Door knock wins the Belmont. Gators men's track team won the national championship. And the big news over the weekend, of course, <laughs> Caitlin Clark. Left off the U.S. Olympic team. Oh, the debate going on now. I mean, we've already had, like, endless debates about Caitlin Clark. Now she's been left off the Olympic team. A lot of people upset about that. Uh, I'm a little bit torn on this. One part of me that says, hey, you know, sports is the ultimate meritocracy. It's not a popularity contest. And she's not one of the 12 best players in the, in the game right uh-huh. now. But the other part of me... The part that's winning out right now is uh, the Olympics is also about growing the sport. She's America's America's girl. I mean, you know what? Taylor Swift should sing a song about her. Mm. About her and the Olympics. Bulldog. I mean, there are 12 spots. You you can certainly make room for the greatest scorer in college basketball history. And and the greatest exposure magnet in in women's college basketball history. And you can't hold it against her that she was in the the NCAA championship uh, series when they were holding their you know oh, Olympic get that, Come on, that has nothing no. to do with it. This it, is just petty jealousy. And it is. And if you won't say it, I will. What? Look, before Caitlin Clark, nobody except a very small pool of people gave a crap about he the WNBA at ago. all, at all. Yeah. And you could still kind of say that if you want to in the big scheme of things. But why in the world? Why in the world would you not strike while the iron's hot with that? So do you think sports should be a popularity contest or a meritocracy? In, in this case, it, it's, it's, I don't think it is a popularity and, contest. I think she's worth her weight in gold. And, and I also, literally, wait, literally. And we are the USA. This is the Olympics. She is, I'm sorry, but America's girl when it comes to female basketball right now. Is she not? She is the most popular player in the game. She's not one of the 12 best. I don't, That's all I don't I'm saying. Care. She's not one of the 12 best. Well, have her ride the bench and America will be happy. I, well, I, I would Again, I some. think she should be on the team just to grow the game. Yeah. But if you, if you think it's a meritocracy, then, you know, she probably doesn't deserve to be on the team based on that. But the Olympics is about more than just who's the best it's also about growing the game and there are millions and millions of girls out there who want to see caitlin clark play in the olympics i don't think it's about america america or whatever the hell you call it i think it's about america this is the u.s olympics bring it they're gonna wish they had her when nothing's going in and they wish they had somebody who drank some threes against slovenia (laughs) well it's not like they need it's not like they need her they win every freaking goal i think they've won the last seven gold medals and nine of the last ten they're 70 and three in their uh, Olympic uh, Olympics over the last several years. Right. So you can discuss this more with the Bulldog over on AM740 and FM 96.9, a game where he hosts Open Mike and Jason Tuss each weekday morning. We thank you for coming in here and uh, providing the sports page on JRR. Brought to you by Kaufman and Lind. Listen to Under Oath with Attorney Jeff Kaufman every Saturday morning, 730 FM 96.9, the game. You can catch extended versions of Under Oath on your favorite streaming platform. Oh, oh. Listen, Taco.
Download the iHeartRadio app.